Hello everybody, and I am on the streets of Shenzhen, China. Very, very beautiful city, very developed, and as an American, actually pretty affordable. Uh, this is a Luckin coffee I have here. It's almost like Starbucks, uh, very popular. And you know, you can almost justify buying one of those a day when it is just that cheap. Yesterday was the Duanwu celebration. It was Monday, and so a lot of people had off of work. The students had finished up with their gao cows, and so everything was very, very lively. Lots of people on the street. But now, it is the next day. It is Tuesday. We have to get back to work. I want to talk a little bit about one of my new favorite terminal applications that I've been using nowadays. Uh, you know, I use Linux, use Linux all the time, and I prefer things that are on the terminal. And today we have Yadzu, which is a um, which is a terminal application that's a, a file manager. Uh, think of it like you know, there's LF, NNN, a VIFM. There's been multiple competitors in this space uh, for a while. Uh, that is uh, Yadzu, though you can pronounce it totally okay if you can pronounce it uh, Yazi. It is the uh, a Chinese word that is supposed to mean duck. Uh, you'll see that in their branding on the GitHub and everything else. Um, but I've, I really enjoy using this application. Uh, I've customized mine to look a lot like my LF build, but going into the good things, the first good thing is that it's coded in Rust. You know, when you're using this file manager, it's going to feel quick, it's going to feel responsive, moving stuff around, you know, I can create files easily, yank it, paste a few times, select a few of these, uh, get rid of them, and, you know, it just does exactly what you want very quickly. I know there's others like Ranger. Ranger was coded in something like Python. And, you know, that just eventually ends up being a little bit slow, you know. Uh, despite your opinions on the Rust Foundation, you know, we can all agree that Rust is a very fast language. And speaking of fast, I want to talk about the dev team. Y Yadza is a pretty new application. It hasn't been around for all that long, but the features, you know, keep rolling out. Uh, I keep a good eye on their GitHub release pages, and it's like every time I check back, you know, there's a lot of new features. Uh, when I was about to make this video, I was about to talk about a few things that I thought the application didn't have, uh, and it ended up actually having it since the uh, last time I had checked. And so I definitely needed to brush up on my notes before making this video, but very, very fast dev team. You can join their Discord. Um, they have a, a few other ways to communicate with the developers as well. And moving on to our first real big point that sets this apart from a lot of competitors, and that is that it has a lot of what you want out of the box. In LF, if you're trying to do something like set up an image preview, you need to go to your configuration, and there's you know all these files uh, that you have, you know the icons, cleaner, your LFRC. Um, so the previewer is one thing that. I, I was going to show it off for this video and show how slow uh, Sixel actually can be in the image previews, but this is a shell script. You, you write the shell script in LF. I really like how you extend LF with uh, shell syntax. Um, that's something to its credit, but you know this could be a skill issue on my part. Uh, I, I don't optimize my Sixel the right way, but I was going to show off. Um, I was going to show off the, the photo previews and how it's actually slow to load and a little low quality if you don't have it um, very, very optimized, but my Sixel has stopped working on LF and I don't know how to fix that. Uh, I have not used it in a while, so I don't know when that actually broke. But let's compare that to Yadza. When I go into the same folder, I go into my media, I go into my pictures, uh, things are very, very quick to pop up on the right side to see some photos of me. We're in there. This is a photo of Atlanta. And it's very, very uh, great. We can even uh, preview some, let me see if I, I found a PDF. I had to do a little bit of digging on my computer. But this is a PDF of a book uh, on algorithms. And another crazy thing that it just has out of the box that I didn't even think that I would have been missing on LF are actual like scrollable previews. If I hit Alt and I hit J and K, I can actually preview and go through some of the pages of a PDF without having to actually go uh, into Zathura. Now, of course, on both uh, both of my builds, you know, I, I hit L and I actually go straight into the book. Um, I also have mine where if I hit capital L 
it'll open in a new pane, but I'll show how to get to that configuration uh, soon enough. Another thing is that it's it's very optimized. It doesn't just um, it doesn't just do Sixel for your images. It actually uses a, an embedded neural network in order to preserve the most quality. I know Sixel is actually kind of limited in some of the colors it's able to show and everything else. And while my photos looked grainy, uh, I don't seem to have that same problem when I'm um, when I'm actually using the image previews on Yad. It all is clean, everything, even videos, actually. The preview, uh, you can hit Alt and go through frames of a video before even going into it. And that has been very, very nice. So that is another win. As far as good customizability, it is very, very open to you. There's a lot visually that you can do. Um, I was able to make mine look like LF rather easily with the rounded corners, you know, my name on the top and everything else. A lot of this is not stock with the odds. But that's okay because it is exposed in what I would say is a very easy way in order to get in. So you have init.lua. Uh, this actually is, I'm, I'm just gonna head straight into my next point, which is the exposed Lua API, which makes a lot of this customization very, very possible. So when I'm in Lua, uh, there's all these functions of the program, but then you can actually override any of those functions in Lua. I know people, uh, you know, have their opinions on scripting languages like this, but Lua is very, very lightweight, uh, very, very easy to just slap on top of a program. Uh, Rust and Lua, you know, are, are very tried and true combinations of having the Rust backend and the Lua, um, the Lua scripting on top. And I was able to get the borders looking the way I wanted to through this function. You can find actually the functions, they'll tell you what to change on the website. If you go to their GitHub docs, they have tons and tons of examples. Um, the host name, I can just get that header bar and I say actually return a line with my name and then an at symbol and then the um, host name and what colors to use is very, very easy. Um, show symlink paths. This is another very, very cool one to where if I do have any symlinks, like my configuration for Yadza, I use a lot of symlinks because I, I kind of use it like a symlink farm. If you look on the bottom, you can actually see init.lua and then an arrow pointing to exactly where it goes to. So it's very, very nice um, in that way. And just a little other things that I, I wanted to do. But talking about the uh, exposed Lua API, there's also plugins uh, that I was able to have. Smart Enter is one of those that, you know, when you hit L, it either enters a directory or um, opens an application or whatever. And so, those buttons that you hit, you can hit L and it will instead enter you into, uh, into a plugin that you can write and a function and you can do whatever it needs to. And so this is something where detach, you know, that, that's where if I hit L on, a, on an item, I wanna go into the item. Uh, you can see I'm actually, I, I have it so that actually from Yadza, I can hit L on my uh, yadza.toml, go straight into it. I quit, I'm back out, I hit uh, capital L, and it will actually detach and give me any good. So let's talk about that for, for a second. Um, that's something I really, really liked about LF, and that it was scriptable through shell syntax, and I was able to uh, get that sort of like functionality per uh, MIME type on an application and everything else. Um, and so how did I replicate the same thing in Yadze? I actually went into the yadza.toml, the opener, and the rules. Uh, I basically have it run a script that I wrote called opener that just sends in the name of the file. And then that goes back to being handled by shell scripting. You know, some things make sense to be handled by shell. Other things are nice to be handled by Lua. And so if I actually uh, open up that shell script, I can go to my uh, local bin opener. And now this is for every file type, what I want to do. Um, <clears throat> if it's an audio, I want to launch MPV. Sometimes it has a cover and I want it to be a GUI application. Other times I want it to be just in the terminal. Uh, let, me, let me show that off. I have this album where the first side, for some reason, the download I found didn't have an album, did not have the uh, cover photos. And so that just goes straight into a terminal. Uh, but the later half of the album actually does have a cover, and so it will open the graphical MPV and replace my window with that. And so that is very, very cool. Uh, but yeah.
Going back, uh, plugins run async by default, which is another big thing. With Rust, you're very, very uh, fearless concurrency is a word that they use a lot in the Rust community. And you know, the developers wanted to make very, very clear that they were really making use of all those features of Rust and really getting something that made use of all uh, concurrent threads and that ran very, very nice without blocking certain things. Um, another thing that uh, I perhaps forgot forgot to write down, but it's another very cool thing, are there, is their task working system, how they get tasks to work in Yazi. So in LF, if you were to try to run a task or something like that, it would, um, it would of course be blocking. If you're trying to uh, undo a zip or something like that, uh, you would have to wait until the zip is fully unpacked until you can start using the application again. In Yadza, you have a you have blocking and non-blocking non shell scripts. So I can write a non-blocking one. I can just say a unpack logical foundations dot tgz. That'll run in the background, and you didn't even see it blocked my screen at all. I was able to use it the whole time. Uh, if I do something like of course, you would never actually do this in practice, but let me try to run a graphical application in the background. You, you see it just keeps running, and I can keep using this, and then I can hit W to go to the task screen. I can see that that's running, and I can actually kill that, so I, I, I don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, that is very, very nice. Or if I choose to, this might actually break, uh, break the file manager really quickly, but I can use a, a blocking shell script and run ASCII Aquarium. And now you see it has totally taken over the control of the application, uh, and then I can quit back out. So that is very, very nice. And the final point is a point that I was about to put in the negatives of Yadza, and that the clipboards and everything else don't share. So that if you yank something on one side, it can be pasted on the other side. But they had a very, very new update uh, that allows you to do exactly that. So on the left-hand pane, I'm going to create a file. I'm going to call it my file. I'm going to press Y, that yanks it to the clipboard, and then I'm going to go to another instance, uh, and you see I'm, I'm able to paste. Actually, it's a little hard to see. So here, I can paste, and then on the original uh, pane, I can paste as well. And so that's a shared clipboard, where they make very clear that it is not necessarily a uh, client-server a client-server interaction. There's not a server daemon that actually runs in the background that all clients uh, connect to. It is a local remote architecture to where the current pane that you're looking at is the local, and then all of the panes are treated as remote, and then that switches when you change to a new active pane. I think it's actually very, very smart in order to you know prevent having to run that service. A lot of people didn't want services running in the background, which is how other file managers might choose to deal with that problem, and that ended up being very, very nice. I guess the last thing is, you know, before I end it, is that it just looks good. I mean, overall, it, it, it's a good-looking file manager. Um, the visual customizability, the colors of the icons, I forgot, I forgot to mention this as well. Uh, your icons can be different colors for what you have. Um, so you can see that I have yellow for the... Um, I, have, I have yellow for the folders, and I have red for the HTML and everything else. Uh, if I actually, like go into a repo with some like different files, you can really see how that looks really, really good. This is an open issue on LF that is yet to be resolved. If I go to the LF file manager, you cannot have that same level of customizability. Some people get around it, try to have the colored icons by having um, like no two color emojis from Google. I, it's a little jank. And there's not enough color emojis to make everything work the way you want it. But this, this just works. Um, is great. You can have all your colors and even notifications. I'll show one last thing before getting out here. If you're still here in the video, thank you very much. Um, but one thing is, let me see, did I put it? Smart, maybe smart enter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, a, I have a commented out thing here that notifies when entering a directory. So of course this is just, why would you want a notification every time you enter a directory? But uh, you know, for the sake of demonstration, I'll enter the Git folder, and you can see entering dir in the very top right. And that's another thing with the Lua that you can just script and have notifications, different colors, different priorities um, that stack and notify you and how long they, they time out. And it really creates an experience that I, I, I've only gone into a very base configuration. You know, I don't like too, too many bells and whistles. And so it can be as simple as you want, as simple as I have for this. Uh, but there's also, 
a way to make it so, so much more. Um, I'm just remembering things left and right. I ought to make better notes that, you know, recently I have it when I press T, it fully maximizes the preview pane, which is very, very nice. And so you can actually, you know, pull up a PDF and start doing Alt J and K through it and reading the pages completely full screen without uh, having to actually enter Zathura or anything like that. And so I think I'm getting a little bit over time, but that was the Yata Terminal File Manager. Thank you very much.